In this tutorial, you will learn how to write a span of numbers using interval notation. Let's get started. If I told you I was thinking of a number between negative 3 and 1, how could you write that mathematically? What symbols could you use? So the most common symbols are the inequality symbols, where the number that you're thinking of is in between negative 3 and 1. Now, if negative 3 is a possibility, you would use this equal to sign. And if 1 was a possibility, you would use this equal to sign. But what we're going to learn in this lesson is how you could write it using a different notation. It's called interval notation. An interval is a section or small or even <laughs> infinite um, direction of numbers. So in this case, interval notation is an even simpler way to write this span of numbers with less characters. In order to do that, we will remove the inequality symbols, we'll remove the variable, and we'll replace them with some type of grouping symbol, and a comma to separate the lowest value and the largest value. So here are some of these grouping symbols that we would use. There are two kinds because there are two kinds of inequalities, those that are around a number or equal to a number. So if you are greater than or less than or equal to, you're going to use brackets. If you are greater than or less than only, you're going to use these rounded parentheses. And actually, your interval notation could even use a combination of both. So how do you know if you need brackets or parentheses? Well, take a look at the sides of these brackets. You see those little horizontal lines at the top and bottom here? It's almost like they look like an equal sign. So you use brackets when you can be equal to a value. So do you see the equal to sign in the brackets there? That's just a little helpful hint. Parentheses are used when you cannot be equal to a number, but you can be around that number, right? So I've said I'm greater than three, then I can't be three, but I can be around it like 3.0001. So we use parentheses when we have a less than or greater than sign. These are the four combinations you can have. You can have two parentheses, you can have two brackets, or you can have one on each side different. Now remember, when you write your interval notation, the smallest value always goes on the left-hand side, and the largest value always goes on the right-hand side, and you separate the two values with a comma in the middle. You choose the grouping symbol, parentheses or brackets, by looking at the inequality sign or the words in your problem. This is the most common way that you start off learning interval notation, and it's with a span of numbers on a number line. Now you might remember, when you're graphing something on a number line, you can have what's called open circles or closed circles. A closed circle has an equal to sign, and an open circle does not. In our red example here, both circles are closed. That's why there are brackets on both the left and right side of my values. The value here on the left is negative 3, that's my lowest value. The value here on the right is 0, that's my highest value. And that is the interval notation for the graph shown on the screen. If you are an open circle, you would use parentheses. Since both sides have open circles, then both sides of your interval notation will have parentheses. Sometimes your graph might have an arrow. An arrow represents that it continues on infinitely in a specific direction. One could be in the negative direction. We call that symbol negative infinity. If it, the arrow moves in the right direction, we call that arrow positive infinity. And here's something to remember. Infinity is not a number. You can't be equal to infinity, but you can move in that direction. 
So if you have an infinity sign or an arrow in your example, then you must always use parentheses because infinity is not a number. It's a direction. Let's take a look at this example here. My mystery number that I'm thinking of is greater than three. So I have an open circle on the three because I cannot be equal to it. So three is my lowest value and I cannot be equal to it, but I can be around it. So that's why I use parentheses. Now, what is the largest value? Well, it's an arrow, which means it's pointing towards infinity. And if you remember what I said, infinity is not a number and it always gets a parentheses. This is the interval notation for this inequality or this graph. Let's try another one, thinking of a mystery number, and it can be less than or equal to negative one. Now, if you are less than negative one, then that would make this one your largest value. So this time, it's gonna go on the right-hand side. And because the circle is shaded, you're gonna use a bracket, because you can be equal to that value. Now, what is the lowest value? Well, the lowest value is an arrow. So that would be negative infinity. And remember, infinity or negative infinity always gets a parentheses. How about without the inequality written? Can you write the interval notation form for this graph? It looks like my lowest value is an arrow. That's negative infinity. And my largest value is a two and it's an open circle. In this one, my lowest value is a negative three with a closed circle, so I can be equal to it. My highest value is an arrow, so that's infinity. Infinity always gets a parentheses. All right, one more. This one does not have an arrow. It has a specific lowest and highest point. The lowest point is negative two, the highest point is positive two, but the circles are different. One is open and one is closed. Why don't you try these three examples on your own? Pause the video now. Okay, let's see how you did. Great job. Here are some other examples if you'd like to pause the video to review them so that you can learn exactly how they look as inequalities, interval notations, or even on a graph. Don't forget you can also find some of these examples in your notes. I suggest you refer back to them if you're having some trouble with the assignments.